Welcome to National 5, Unit 1, Carrier 2, Transport Across Cell Membranes Lesson. This is Lesson 2, Part C. Please make sure you've watched Lesson 1, Part B, before moving on to this video. So finally, we're on to our last bit of theory for Carrier 2. So far, we've learned about the two types of passive transport, diffusion and osmosis. And remember, passive transport is the movement of molecules across the selectively permeable membrane that didn't require energy. Now we're going to move on and focus on active transport instead. So our learning intentions for this lesson are to identify the process of active transport and to look at the differences between active transport, diffusion and osmosis. So by the end of this mini lesson, I want you to be able to state the definition of active transport and discuss and explain differences between active transport and the two forms of passive transport. So with active transport, the main difference is that energy is required for this process. So we learned before with passive transport like diffusion and osmosis, molecules move from a high to a low down a concentration gradient. But with active transport, instead, molecules move from low to high concentrations and therefore we now can't say it's going down the concentration gradient anymore because we're now going the opposite direction. However, it's important we don't say that active transport goes up the concentration gradient instead. Um, that's not correct. Actually, we, what we say is that it goes against the concentration gradient. Now, the way I try and remember this is I picture this diagram in my head and I think about the fact that with passive transport, we don't need energy as molecules move from high to low naturally. That's the way they want to move. So I try and think about it as this diagram, the kind of big rock at the top and the rock rolling down the gradient from high to low is diffusion osmosis, is your passive transport. However, with active transport, if we want to try and put, get from low to high, you would need to push that rock back up this gradient. So you're pushing it against the way that it wants to go naturally, and we're forcing the molecules to go from a low to high concentrations. And because of that, we also need to put energy in as well to put this back up the way. So with the active transport definition, there's quite a few changes to the two we looked at previously. Most of them are the opposite of the diffusion definition. So first of all, what I want us to notice is that we still see movement of molecules at the start, but we've now added in and ions in here too. Okay, so movement of molecules and ions is how we start. Now, instead of moving from an area of low to an area of high or high to low concentration like before, we're now moving from low to high instead. Um, so different from osmosis and diffusion, so our opposite direction. And as we said in the last diagram, this is now going against the concentration gradient instead of down. And as we knew from the start, the big difference between active and passive transport is that active transport requires energy. So putting this all together, the definition for active transport is the movement of molecules and ions from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration against the concentration gradient, and this requires energy. Now, the final difference between active and passive transport is how the molecules physically move across the membrane. So unlike passive transport, where the molecules diffuse across between the gaps or pores in the membrane, so within pores or between your phospholipids, active transport requires membrane proteins to physically move them across the membrane, these ions and molecules. These proteins carry the molecules and ions and force them across the membrane against the concentration gradient. And to do that, they require energy. So here's an example of what active transport might look like. This is actually what happens in the nerve cells in our body. So they use active transport all the time to be able to move potassium ions into the cell by active transport. So using membrane proteins, they move potassium ions from a low concentration outside the cell to a high concentration inside the cell and moving them in this direction from left to right against the concentration gradient using energy. And they do the same thing with sodium ions, except they use active transport to move the ions out of the cell instead and that's really important for how they function. Now this is just an example and you're not required to know about the specifics of nerve cell um, acts of transport for the exam. So now that we've covered all of the theory from Carrier 2 we're going to do two quick final tasks to help consolidate your knowledge of what we learned in transport across cell membranes. So for task one I've put a list of statements in red. I want you to pause the video and make a table with two headings for me. Passive transport is one heading and active transport is the other. 
and then sort these statements in red into the correct columns. Now, one thing that will make things easier for the next task is try and sort them so they're under the correct heading and across from the similar statement on the other side. So for example, low to high should be across from high to low, as this is gonna help with the next task. So pause the video here and create your table. Once you're done sorting the statements, play the video and I'll run through the answers. Okay, so your table should have looked something like this. So passive transport on one side, active on the other, doesn't matter what way round they are, um, and we'll go through your answers. So down the concentration gradient should have been under passive, and active should have been against the concentration gradient. Passive should have been high to low, whereas active should have been low to high. Passive should have been no energy needed, active should have been energy or ATP needed. Don't worry about this word if you haven't done biology before, we're going to come back to this in KDA6. No protein carriers required for passive transport, whereas active uses protein carriers. Okay, so another tip um, that's really useful is to try and memorise a table like this for the exam. Um, it's a really common question in testing exams actually to make comparison between passive and active transport or diffusion and active transport. Um, so this table does help with that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to give our second task a try. So with this task, this is an extended response question based on the table we've just done. So it's asking you for four marks to compare the differences between active and passive transport. Now here's some hints before we start. So think back to your table to help you. Try and do it from memory if possible. And remember for comparison questions, you can't just list differences. You have to compare them directly. So it's not enough just to list the four things about passive transport. You need to actually compare them directly to active transport. So you need to structure it something like this. So passive transport, something, whereas or but, active transport, something different, okay? And you would want four sentences like this to get your four marks. So pause the video here, give the extended response to your listener a try, and when you're ready to mark it, hit play. Okay, so this would be one mark for each sentence. You would get no marks for just saying passive transport doesn't require energy by itself, for example. You need to say direct comparisons. So let's go through your answers. They can be in any order here, it doesn't matter. So passive transport occurs down a concentration gradient, whereas active transport occurs against the concentration gradient. That would get one mark. Passive transport involves movement of molecules from a high to low concentration, whereas active transport is the movement from low to high. Second mark. Passive transport doesn't require energy, whereas active transport does. Get your third mark. And then active transport requires protein carriers, whereas passive transport doesn't. Get final mark. Okay. So finally, to finish it off, we're going to do a final quick set of questions. As usual, pause the video and try and answer the questions without notes, and then play for answers. So the first question is describe the process of active transport. They're just wanting your definition here. So movement of molecules and ions from a low to high concentration against the concentration gradient. You can also add that it uses membrane proteins and requires energy. Name the membrane molecule involved in active transport. It's just proteins or membrane proteins is fine as well. And number three is describe a difference between diffusion and active transport. This is just one mark. So any of the ones we use in that essay so you can talk about high to low versus low to high, energy versus no energy required, down versus against the concentration gradient, or you can talk about membrane proteins being required or not. So in the past four mini lessons, we've covered all of the content from Kiria 2 Transport Cross Cell Membranes that's been on the screen. Please remember to use your mandatory knowledge or course spec documents to make sure you understand all the knowledge that you can be tested on in the final exam. Both of these columns, you should be able to understand now and be able to tick these off and know for your exam. Um, if you're making any form of revision evidence, um, it would also be good to use this document to ensure you include all of that as well. Thanks for listening.